So I'll go, I'll talk hopefully for about five minutes about our project, uh, which is not a persistent identifier project, but hopefully as I talk through it, you'll see that uh, the two projects uh, share some uh, similar kind of uh, visions and similar challenges, uh, but also sort of diverge in some interesting ways. Uh, so our project is called Heritage Connector, transforming text into data to extract meaning and make connections. It's a collaboration between the Science Museum group with myself, Jim Yun Wen and Rianne and Lewis there, uh, the School of Advanced Study at the University of London with Professor Jane Winters and the VA with Angela Wolf working on that side and we're currently looking to um, hire a um, developer. I've just realized just about the word research wrong, so I'll go and correct that in a minute. So a little bit about our project. So uh, the third museum group collection uh, spans across five museums. Um, <clears throat> it's an incredibly diverse collection. So it's not just scientific instruments. It includes art, it includes ethnography, transport. Uh, and there's also an extremely large um, archive with in particular, a very, very large photographic collection. Uh, we're currently undertaking a very large uh, digitization project, which will see about an additional 300,000 objects put online. And therefore, inevitably, that project is about um, breadth rather than depth of the collection. Um, and so for the most part, as our objects go online, they actually tend to have really quite thin records. And in part, that's because the speed of the digitization, which we're undertaking, and that speed is uh, created by a kind of imperative to move our collection store. Uh, but it's also because it's a kind of legacy of the way that the museum collection was created, which is fundamentally the collection and catalog was about inventory management. So it's really uh, about managing and caring for the collection rather than public access. That's now changing. We're now cataloging primarily for public access, but we have this kind of legacy of a sort of human readable centered approach. Um, so our core research question is how can existing digital tools and methods be used to build relationships at scale between poorly and inconsistently catalogued digitized collection objects and other content sources? Um, so what does that mean in practice? Uh, one of the things that we've been looking at is how do we transform uh, what for the most part is kind of free text uh, or a limited use of controlled vocabularies to something meaningful. And so rather than creating our own uh, identifiers, we've been looking at uh, Wikidata as an external uh, kind of data point with which we could explore attaching our that collection. So Wikidata has about 76 million data points. Um, and so what is Wikidata for those of you who don't know? So it's operated by the uh, Wikimedia Foundation, which is the same organization that runs the encyclopedia Wikipedia. Uh, so whereas the kind of prose on the page of a Wikipedia entry uh, is other components of the page, are actually held in an external sort of data set called Wikidata. In particular, the title uh, of uh, a page and some of the other structural elements are abstracted out into Wikidata. And also there's a panel on the right hand side and quite often a panel at the bottom of the page, which is uh, also available as um, free open data. And one of the interesting uh, things about this, so why did they structure it this way? It's so that, uh, information that is structured in uh, Wikipedia can be handled in that way, but it also means that things that are kind of statements of fact can be abstracted out across the multiple different languages of Wikipedia. If somebody dies, you just update that in one place and it flows across the different language versions, for example. Uh, <clears throat> it also frequently includes much richer information on things that we hold in our own uh, uh, data set and it also includes links onto other places and which we'll come on to in a second. Uh, so this is a photograph from uh, our collection 
and so this is one of the things that we're looking at is how can we transform uh, what here might be in, in some cases in uh, fields in the data set so these ones here that define places and people and makers and so on uh, how can we transform those into things that we could you know a computer could understand uh, and that we could start to create new forms of exploration and discovery and research on but we also in addition have quite a large number of elements in our data uh, collection catalog which are um, uh, prose or free text and within those there's probably um, uh, other things, companies, events, locations, and so on, which could both be used to disambiguate some of the other uh, data points, but also it might be data points in their own right. Uh, so to, to take it as an example, this mentions a train station. The Wikidata entry for this train station includes uh, an image of what it is today. It includes the latitude and longitude, so this image could be put on a map it includes uh, uh, the previous uh, or the next stations along the train line in both directions. So very quickly, you could see that if you had a very large number of objects related to a train, them together very quickly and start to present them in new ways, uh, which would not be sort of possible by free text search or would be much more onerous. Uh, in addition, the uh, Wikidata includes links onto other identifiers. So these are all the identifiers uh, for the artist Picasso. Um, and in there you'll see, uh, you know, the Tate ID, the RUK ID, uh, and so on. So, the, so Wikidata for us could also be a bouncing off point between those things in our collection uh, and onto other places. So in terms of the kinds of things that we're sort of thinking about what might this lead to, these were very visual examples because doing a presentation on a webinar lends itself to that, but clearly the, a lot more computationally driven in these things into search and so on. But certainly being able to display things and uh, 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 by time and events. This is a map that was done by um, the National Libraries of Wales, uh, taking uh, paintings and what they depicted and then using Wikidata to pull out the latitude and longitude to make a nice map, which was also immediately multilingual. Uh, and then also kind of richer forms of interface allowing uh, the collections to be discovered in ways which using our own catalog as it exists at the moment is, uh, would be impossible. And then visualizations that allow the kind of linking through of the kind that Joe described when you have a much richer data set, you can start to ask way more sophisticated questions from a research point of view. So, what are our uh, activities within our projects? So, we're testing and evaluating only existing software tools. We don't have time to write our own, but there are a great many out there. Some of them are specializing in uh, our sector and in this particular uh, field, and others are much more generalist tools for extracting entities and recognizing those within free text. So we're fundamentally looking at what exists out there and evaluating them against a number of criteria. Uh, we're, going start, we're going to have a webinar which starts to look at potential for those things, to, uh, what projects have explored similar areas. Uh, we'll apply the, and initially we'll apply the methods only to the Science Museum Group's collection, which is extremely diverse, but we'll then expand that out and apply that to the v &A's collection. <coughs> Excuse me. In part, that's really interesting because at one point the v &A's collection and the Science Museum Group's collection were a single collection. So there are instances where we hold uh, the physical weaving loom for something and the textiles that it made uh, were, are held by the, uh, the v &A. Uh, we'll then apply tools to uh, non-collection resources. So we've been thinking about once we have a kind of methodology, we might also look at applying that to things like um, data sets of uh, PhD theses or journal articles to see whether we can use things like entity extraction and other machine learning based things to try and pull out links there. 
and then we'll extend it out a handful of other collections. And then finally, at the end, once we have a set of methodologies and we have a kind of resulting uh, data set of links, or uh, uh, we'll then bring together some developers to build kind of lightweight prototypes, uh, example things that use uh, those approaches. And I suppose one of the things that's sort of key through, throughout this, which is in a way one of the things that makes it different from the persistent identifier projects, one of our research questions is, <coughs> excuse me, is really around what's good enough. So at the moment, uh, if you come to our uh, online collection and you and you type in keywords, uh, you'll you'll get what we give you. If we have uh, if we had enough curators with enough time, they would build something absolutely perfect. And this project is really looking at oh, is there a sort of middle way which uses recent recent um, affordances of uh, digital uh, technology to build something that's better than the search and discovery is currently uh, and gets us a long way down the road towards uh, absolute authority and, and perfection which is ultimately what our goal should be. So that's the end for me, that's the URL of our project and then I'll, I'll quickly stick up the, uh, the actual research questions and then when you watch back the recording you can see what those are. I think they're on the website but those are our, our full research questions which I will not read out now. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much, John. Um, so, uh, anyone have a question for John? I'll just give it another minute or so, uh, as people uh, may or may not be able to type them in quickly. Um, so, because of the clear links uh, between Heritage Connector and uh, Persistent Identifiers, we're hoping that one of our events will be able to do jointly. So we'll do uh, one day um, on Heritage Connector and one day uh, in the same venue, uh, in the same place the very next day on Persistent Identifiers. I can't remember when we set that up for. Um, in my head I've got it that's going to be January next year, um, but I can't quite remember whether I've just invented that date, so we shall see. <laughs> Um, but obviously we'll tell everyone about that uh, when we pull it together. So we have a question come through, um, which is, uh, do you see a role for AI in your project? Uh, so yes, absolutely. And so a lot of the techniques we're looking at are based on AI and machine learning. So we won't be writing a, uh, our own um, machine learning tools would be using existing ones, but fundamentally that's what's making these things possible. Uh, and then within that, I'll answer the follow-up question is, are there ethical considerations around that? Yes, there are. And so one of our questions is, our research questions is around uh, inherently within the way that AIs are trained, uh, there are inherent biases, uh, as there are in our own collections, as there are in Wikidata. And so one of the kind of things that we're, we're writing up and looking at is, are we able to understand those? And both Jamie and I were involved in a, uh, the Museums and AI Network, which was another AHR funded project, uh, which whose report was published uh, quite recently. And so we've been looking at their toolkits as a way to kind of quantify that and explore that within the project. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is, you mentioned ethnography collections. How do you manage intellectual property rights uh, for its objects? OK, um, so our ethnography collection is quite small. Uh, so I actually don't have the answer to that because it's not really my area of expertise. But Jack. Um, so what we could do is uh, I could pass that question on to Jack um, and we could publish an answer when we uh, put the recording of this out. Um, the last yeah. question for you uh, is, is there any data that we can play with right now or is this something that will be developed as part of the project? Uh, Yes, there will be open data sets coming, but there are not currently. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. 
Um, so we will uh, finish our talks bit from there. Thank you very much uh, to Joe and John.